Now for the last of the five skills, and it's definitely one of the most interesting. Instead of adding bonuses to previously existing systems in the game, Combat Mastery chooses to add a completely new system entirely. It adds the ability to find and equip trinkets, the crafting recipe for an anvil which can reroll the stats of those trinkets, and the mini forge recipe which is just a mobile version of the forge. So let's get the simplest one out of the way first, the mini forge. The crafting recipe is a little wild, 10 iron bars, 10 gold bars, five iridium bars, and the kicker, five dragon teeth. So while you could get this recipe before reaching Ginger Island, you won't be able to craft it until you've at least spent some time in the volcano. Other than being able to be placed anywhere, it works identically to the main forge. It still costs cinder shards, you can upgrade tools and weapons, and combine rings. If you want the full in-depth look at everything you can do at the forge, I have a separate guide for it. Although notably, there is a new type of enchantment for weapons in 1.6, innate enchantments, which can be re-rolled with dragon teeth. Now onto the highlight, trinkets. This unlocks a new equipment slot exclusively for trinkets. Trinkets can be dropped from any enemy, the chance starts at 0.4%, and for each point of HP the enemy has, the chance increases by 0.001%. There's a bunch of more modifiers. If it's a flying enemy with more than 150 HP, it gets another 0.2% chance, and spiders in the Dangerous Mines specifically have a 0.5% lower chance. I don't know why. In theory, this makes the best enemy to hunt the Royal Serpents in the Dangerous Skull Cavern, which has a max of a 1.65% chance to drop a trinket if it has the maximum number of tail segments, which is completely random. Each segment it has adds 50 HP. And the last modifier, Daily Luck can add or subtract around 0.4%, and Luck Buffs add 0.13% chance each. Personally, I think the Dangerous Mines floors 40 to 70 is the best bet. The mushroom enemies spawn in huge groups, and the frost bats, being flying enemies, have a pretty good natural drop rate as well. As a final note for enemies, trinkets specifically aren't affected by the Burglar's Ring or the Monster Compendium buffs. You can also find them in crates and barrels, which have the same chances as monsters, minus the whole HP part. Plus, the deeper you are, the higher chance you have. Fun fact, the quarry mine is essentially set as floor 5000. So ignoring any luck modifiers, you will have a 2.4% chance to find trinkets and barrels there. Now that we've gone over the drops, what about the trinkets themselves? Let's go one by one. Note before we start that most trinkets have a stat that varies when it's dropped. The Basilisk Paw is the only exception to that. It makes you immune to debuffs. That's it. Fairies have two variable stats, the amount of time between heals and heal power. The heal power is essentially a multiplier that goes into the formula that decides how much you'll be healed by. The heals from level 5 are essentially 50% stronger than level 1. And added in one of the later updates, fairies have cosmetic variances as well. The frog egg summons a frog companion that will eat enemies that get close to it. It doesn't have any varying stats, but it does come in a bunch of different colors. A couple of important notes, enemies eaten by the frog will not drop any items and will not count towards the monster slayer goals. The Golden Spur gives you a speed boost equivalent to a coffee buff each time you get a critical hit. The amount of time the buff lasts can vary from 5 to 10 seconds. The Ice Rod shoots a slow orb that will freeze any enemies that touch it. There's two varying stats with this one, how long between each shot, which can be anywhere from 3 to 5 seconds, and the freeze duration, anywhere from 2 to 4 seconds. It goes through walls so it can possibly freeze enemies that are out of reach, which can be annoying. Be wary. The Magic Quiver shoots magic arrows at nearby enemies. Not only are the stats themselves variable, but the Magic Quiver itself has a few different variants that affects how those stats vary. You can see all of the specific stats in the window on the left. There's lots of possibilities. And last, the Parrot Egg. It gives enemies a chance to drop 250 gold, and the chance is dependent on its level. 10%, 20%, 30%, and 40% for levels 1, 2, 3, and 4, respectively. Crazy thing is, if the game rolls that the enemy drops gold, it will roll again and again until it fails, adding 250 gold to the drop each time. Also note that you can only get certain levels of Parrot Eggs after reaching a certain threshold of total money earned and you can check this on the inventory page of your menu. There is one more trinket, but it's not combat related. The magic hair gel can be sold by Alex during the Desert Festival for 100 calico eggs, and all it does is add a prismatic effect to your hair. I will say, out of the group, my personal favorites are the Ice Rod, the Golden Spur, and most of all, the Parrot Egg. 
a lot of the others tend to mess with you a little bit, like the magic arrows knock back enemies, kind of throwing you off. The ice rod is fantastic for defense, but sometimes it freezes enemies outside of your reach, so you can't knock them out. And as much as I love the little frogs, I want those enemy drops. And the Parrot Egg is one of the only ones that has absolutely no downside. So what if you got a trinket, but you didn't get the variant that you wanted? That's where the Anvil comes in. For the cheap, cheap price of 50 iron bars to craft it and the cheap, cheap price of three iridium bars to use it, that was sarcasm, you can reroll your trinket to change its stats. This is to say, rerolling won't always mean that you get a better trinket. It is left up to chance each time. Now this means that you could go through an entire stack of iridium bars trying to get the perfect reroll. And this is especially true if you're trying to get something like the perfect variant of the Magic Quiver, or the Prismatic Frog. But at the very least, you can restart your day to try rerolling again for a different result. And that's it. That's all of them. I hope I've properly demystified some of the more complicated systems added in the 1.6 update. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And good night.